Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, family. Welcome to Midday with LaJean and Valora. We're excited to be with you guys on today. Blessings, blessings as you come on. Please share the broadcast and invite others to come in and join in with us. It's going to be an amazing, amazing broadcast. Super, super excited. As you know, we've been going through uh, pretty much a series on bewitch discerning um, the voices that will attempt to disrupt or destroy your destiny and so we're so so honored to have with us on today um, prophetess Latanya Smith yes she is here she is here she is ready and um, and so are we and I think you guys are too it's been an amazing amazing uh, series as we started off on last week and we continue and each speaker has really brought an amazing concept and allowed us to see things a little bit differently even in the area of bewitchment what that looks like um the things that it targets and you know how you know the things that um you know many people have said that they've been a part of that they've been a, a victim of bewitchment and um, whether it's in a church, in a relationship, in a marriage. And so we want to uh, continue this series and uncover more truths um, about that um, on today. Yes, let me, let me give you a quick update for those of you who have not been watching. Of course, today, as my wife said, we have the amazing, the incomparable, <laughs> and uh, tremendously anointed uh, Prophet Latanya Smith. And, you yes. know, we love her. She is... Uh, uh, just been connected with us for uh, I don't even know how long now um, and so two hundred years. years yes is it three years <laughs> three. I thought it was longer than three yeah, years it's only been three. wow it seemed like it's just been 300 yeah. amen yeah. but uh, I'm really excited so let's look at this we've so far we've had uh, some amazing uh, generals in the area of spiritual warfare and we've got a few more coming uh, we have had, of course, uh, Apostle uh, Jojo Dawson. We had Prophet Sophia Ruffin. Uh, we had uh, Apostle, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Alexander Pagani. Yes. We had Apostle, um, oh God, we had Apostle Tao on here, uh, Andrew Tao. We had, yesterday we had Apostle Nigel Lewis from Trinidad, talked to Tremendous. And then we had uh, our spiritual uncle, Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping that I'm not leaving anybody Apostle out. Ryan and and uh, yep, Apostle Ryan McGimsey, Lord have mercy. He really ministered <laughs> so strong and so powerful. And then uh, we also had, uh, we also have coming up on Friday, we have, uh, I think I talked to Jennifer Ebaz, and so she's, she's committed to being here on Friday at one o'clock. And so we're really excited just about the people that are coming. Uh, Prophet Latanya has a very strong background in this area as well, dealing with, uh, of course, you know, she's pastored a church actually before, so she has the church side of it, but then she also understands the backside of witchcraft and how some of those things work because she is, a, she's, you know, she's doing some tremendous work training prophets and intercessors literally around the world, and so we're really, really excited to have her on today. Let me cover a few things that uh, a few of the speakers have said, and I kind of did some recaps. We started out in Galatians 3 and 1, and Paul asked the question, who has bewitched you? And it seems like we've migrated from there, I believe it was to Acts chapter 8, verse 8 and 9, uh, where there was a, a young man who was going throughout bewitching people uh, and using sorcery. So we've covered those two uh, 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 scriptures, and we found that that word, uh, that the word bewitch means viscano, and literally means uh, you know, in, in one aspect, it almost means to talk into the ear and to change and to change the perspective of it. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Uh, and then uh, I also, uh, let me see. Okay, let me give you, uh, let me give you a few of my notes. So one of the things uh, they talked about was how this spirit of bewitchment literally wants to fascinate you to the place of mesmerizing you, and it literally takes you into another place. Uh, some things that you experience when you've been bewitched is you're in fear, you have loss of identity, loss of energy, you're tired, you have a loss of peace, there's anxiety, uh, there is uh, an inability to control and discipline yourself, confusion, depression, discouragement, indecisiveness, and bad decisions. 
And then sometimes you're not yourself or you operate outside of your normal character. Uh, you get upset with people you normally have patience with. You're timid or fearful when you should be bold. And then uh, there's a different ways of, of bewitchment. Be bewitchment by mind control, bewitchment by seduction, bewitchment by casting of spells or witchcraft, uh, bewitchment by false love. That's something Apostle Alexander Bagani talked about. And then bewitchment by means of spiritual kidnapping. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then I think Apostle uh, Apostle Ryan McJimsey talked about bewitchment by false leadership. Wow. Uh, and then, then I was sharing that you can have bewitchment by your own voice, the voice of envy, jealousy, covetousness, as it was with Cain and Abel as it was with and then even the voice of offense so you can you can listen to voices within yourself and literally uh begin to begin to be bewitched even by yourself and then uh bewitchment by means of spiritual hypnosis i haven't covered that one yet but we're going to talk about it because i asked my wife the question yesterday i said can you lit can somebody literally hip hypnotize somebody and she said absolutely and so that means if you can do it in the natural you can do it in the spirit and so uh, we looked at that. And so you have to, uh, the enemy's uh, intent there is to detach you from relationships, derail your destiny, divide you from friends, uh, destroy you, uh, and use as bait, seduction, exploitation of weaknesses or voids or open wounds in your life to be able to do this. Uh, and again, he wants to destroy destiny, detach you, murder you, assassinate you, isolate you, separate you, and cause you to break covenant. Another word I looked at last night, Prophet Latanya, before we release you to go forth and really uh, let it go, is this thought of, of abdication. And so this is a word as I was uh, meditating last night and just hearing from the, the, the Lord. And I said, what is the word? Because when the Lord said it to me, I never necessarily really heard the word, used the word in my vocabulary, but the Lord said abdicate. And so it's a, it's a, it's a royal word. It's of, of monarchs, which means to renounce one's throne. And this is what the enemy got uh, Adam to do in the garden because he had a throne. He was, he had a position of responsibility and royalty and literally the enemy got him to disobey and abdicate his position of authority. And so when he does that, now the enemy has a legal right to what went to your throne because of your disobedience to the person that you, that you're responsible for. Uh, and so, um, and so we, we came up with some things where we said, we're, my wife is creating some prayers that's going into the ebook, uh, and talking about just repenting and closing doors, breaking control, uh, breaking the spells of fascination, divination, bewitchment, and seduction placed by any witch, warlock, soothsayer, or any other person who's caused me to operate outside of my right mind. I'm free and delivered and walking in my right mind. I break the spell of any bewitchment I've entered into by willing disobedience. I break the generational curses, agreements, and covenants entered in by my ancestors. And so we looked at these and we're preparing that now, creating that. And uh, so I, we brought Prophet Latanya on because, again, I know she is tremendous. And so I want you guys to hear her heart uh, and really, really hear what she has to say, because I really believe she's going to bring even a different dimension that other people have brought. And, uh, and I believe it's going to be tremendous. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, Prophet Latanya, what do you think about that? <laughs> well, first of all, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, uh, Apostle John, the Prophets of the Lord, for allowing me to um, share this platform with you, especially with something that is so timely with um, with bewitchment. And one of the reasons why I think that so many people are interested in the be bewitchment and why this is so um, pi pivotal is because one of the things that God has been um, dealing with me over the last 90 days is that there are some of the spirits that we deal with that we treat them as though they are low level spirits or they're low lying or they're just little imps but what god was showing me about the bewitchment and the bewitched spirit is that it is actually a cosmo crater mm. it is actually a a cosmo crater which means that it, you know we know that there are hierarchies to our warfare and so with it being a cosmo crater it is significant because of the fact that it is able to influence cities it's able to influence regions and it's able to influence nations mm. and and I believe that's why God has given you this and the two to release it um, globally through this these platforms with Periscope and also with Facebook, but also with the ebook to release it globally. Because now what it does is it causes for us as a body of believers, believers to come together and to do diligent warfare against this cosmic crater as one. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes what happens is we're trying to um we're uh, the efficacy of our warfare um becomes diminished because certain Cosmo craters or certain level rankings of, of, of the enemy, we have to fight them as a unified effort. 
I can't as Latanya go and say I'm gonna mm. go deal with Leviathan by myself. Mm -hmm. I as Latanya can't say I'm going to go and deal with um, even bewitchment by myself because mm -hmm. what God was showing me is that bewitchment it is a global entity. It is a global. Um, it is it is a global demonic force. It's mm -hmm. not something that is just assigned to prophetess Valor or is assigned to me. It is it is assigned to. Um, Tampa region or it is assigned to a community it is assigned there so if you don't have um you talked about this before about cross pollen pollinating and we don't cross pollinate our anointings and we don't cross pollinate our spiritual warfare efforts then we won't really see the efficacy and the breakthrough that we need to have in these type of spirits such as the um bewitchment and so I don't know if I really have another angle to come from, but you I... You already did. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And let me say why. Because when you look at... Let me throw this in real quick as you're talking. When you look at... Um, you look at each one of those scenarios when it was dealt with. When you look at Paul and Galatians, see, I, I see again. You always come up with something, man. That listen, she always mm -hmm. knocks something out the park. Yes. Because when you look at it, you know when you when you look at that and you look at that scripture, you, you know, for we don't, you know, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities and and yes. uh, rules of wickedness, high places. And, and the word krasmukator is krasmukator uh, is one of the Greek words that comes from that from that statement. And, uh, and so it's talking about, as you said, the hierarchies of religious, or not religious, but uh, uh, hierarchies of demons yes. and, and spirits. And so what you just said really makes sense because when you go back to Galatians chapter 3, again, Paul is writing to the Galatian churches. Absolutely. So it's not just mm -hmm. the one individual. Absolutely. It, this thing comes to attack churches. When I look at even over our background of, of ministry, mm -hmm. it didn't just come to attack one person in the church. It came to attack the entire community and as a result, try to take entire communities out. Mm -hmm. It's come to try to take entire regions out. Absolutely. That's what happened in, Gal in, the, in the Galatian region. Even when you look at what you're saying, even when Paul and Barnabas dealt with it with uh, with the young man, uh, in, was it, I think Simon the Sorcerer in, uh, in Acts chapter 8, verse 8 and 9, it was literally that whole city. Mm -hmm. And so it's never that it just comes to attack one person. It's an entire city. So that even lets me know, uh, because when I thought, when you said that, and I'm, I'm going to pass it, the baton back, when you said that, what I thought about was strongholds. Yes. And what I thought about was in wartime, uh, there are some tanks and some things that you can do, you can take out by yourself. But there are some times that it takes a combined armed force to be able Absolutely. to deal with. So that means that there are some levels of uh, of units that you can't even fight by yourself. One man with a machine gun, M16, cannot go in and, and take that thing out. It takes another tank and a tank, even though it's one tank, there's five to seven people inside that tank that help you to take that thing out. Wow. And so it's, wow. it's, not, it's not just one person. And sometimes it's going to take several shots from several different tanks simultaneously engaging a target to destroy. So it takes the prophets. It takes the, 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 uh, the teachers. It takes the apostle. It takes, it takes the intercessor. It takes the worship. It takes all of that to dislodge that demonic spirit mm -hmm. and really hit it in the head. So, no, you, you own this something. I think that's, I think that's tremendous. Yes, I, you know, and that was one, yeah, with the bewitchment, you were talking about the, the military term. Now, I'm not a military person in the, in, you know, in the natural, but one of the things, going back to what you just said, when we're dealing with um, spirits like be, bewitchment and the python, and we're dealing with leviathan spirits, and we're dealing with these territorial things, um, one of the things that I learned um, from a military perspective is that what, what the ebook is going to do, and even what these Facebook lives and periscopes are doing, it is allowing for us now, for those who will catch it that are viewing us will allow for them to create beachheads in their own area. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes what happens is, is that the reason why we become disabled and dysfunctional during warfare is because we don't properly gain the rightful knowledge that we need about that particular enemy and how that enemy operates. Mm -hmm. And so we hear, oh, bewitchment. We hear, oh, live Leviathan. We hear, oh, Python. We hear, oh, Jezebel. And then what begins to happen and we start just, just fighting and ricocheting and we start doing all of this stuff, but we don't necessarily have the, the, the intel or the reconnaissance. Mm -hmm. that we need to know about these particular spirits or entities that we are fighting. And then once again, as you said, now we have to go galvanize a team mm -hmm. 
that is going to be able to help to um, use, uh, it takes apostolic decrees, it takes prophetic decrees, it takes rapid fire succession prayers to be able to dismantle and to bring down these types of things that are over, um, that are over our regions. Mm -hmm. And so, um, one of the things, um, I wanted to bring up, um, that I thought about, and it goes into what you were saying about the abdicate, because God had me dealing with the courtroom of heaven. But one of the things, and I won't read the whole scripture, but we all know who Samson is. Samson was one of the, you know, the infamous, I like to say, judge of the Bible. And we know him, unfortunately, more because of his infidelity towards God than really, you know, his lifestyle as being a judge. But the thing about this is that I want to really, really reinforce to everyone, including myself, is that um, Jesus said that they could not find any fault in him. And when they were getting ready to crucify and they were saying, well, who do you want me to free? Is it Barnabas? Is it Jesus? Who do you want me to free? And if you remember Herod, the, 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 the man, the, 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 uh, the, the political office, he took, he, well, he put his hands in the water. He washed his hands and he said, you know what? I'm washing my hands of this. He said, because I, we can't find any fault with this man. But I say that to say this, oftentimes we think that bewitchment, oh, that ain't me. Oh, that has nothing to do with me. Oh, oh, that would never happen to me. But according to this word in Judges 13 with Samson, Samson was bewitched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Samson was bewitched. And to me, I believe that according to scripture, the bewitchment is happening more to those of us that are believers than are not. Mm -hmm. And it happens to those of us who are anointed. It happens to those of us who are called. It happens to those of us who are operating in our giftings and operating in our capacities. How do I know that it happens to us that are anointed? Because the Bible says that even before Samson was conceived, that his mother had a visitation from an angel. Mm. That angel told her she was going to conceive. She went to her husband, told her husband what the angel said. He said, well, the next time this person, this angel appears to you, I need to talk with them. The father subsequently ends up having a conversation. Samson's father has a conversation with the angel. And the only thing he wanted to know was, what is the manner of consecration for the child? Mm. Mm. Meaning, what? How, 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 how do we need to raise him? How do we need to cultivate him? So I'm saying all this because you, you, you are already anointed and you are already called. But that does not make you exempt from being bewitched because Samson was bewitched. And one of the key things about being bewitched is this. The bewitched is, is, is after the future. Wow. The bewitched is after the legacy. The bewitched is after the inheritance. And the bewitched is after your assignment on your life that God uses to pull down the strongholds. That God uses to pull down the strongholds over cities and regions. Remember, Samson was a judge, which meant that he had regional implications. He had global implications. But let me tell you how bewitchment works because it has its own weapons. Bewitchment is not necessarily after the gift. And let me tell you why. Samson was a judge. He was anointed. He was called. Evidently, he had the gift of arbitration. Evidently, mm -hmm. he had the gift to be able to deal with court systems and to be able to deal with legal systems. What the enemy knows and recognizes is this. He knows that he cannot attack the gift and he cannot destroy the gift giver. Mm -hmm. But what he can do is he can bewitch you or bewitch someone else and he can attempt to destroy your character. He can attempt to destroy your integrity. He can attempt to destroy your future. He can attempt to destroy your influence. He will tear down your ministry. He will tear down your church. He will tear down your business. So he cannot attack the gift and he cannot destroy the gift giver, which is God. But he will cause what bewitchment to happen in the ears of other people. People, and now people now people looking at you different now. Mm -hmm. People now they whispering. People now oh they act like oh well they you know what she ain't what I thought she was. Mm -hmm. He not what he thought. Mm -hmm. He not what I thought he was because of the fact that he is destroying your integrity. He is trying to destroy um, your character. He is mm -hmm. trying to destroy your future. When you look at Jesus in the wilderness, it was the same concept. Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit. But once he got there, the enemy, he couldn't, he couldn't destroy the gift. Right. 
couldn't, couldn't destroy the gift giver, but guess what he tried to do? He wanted to discredit Jesus in the wilderness. And he thought because Jesus was wrapped in this flesh mm -hmm. that he was going to be able to fulfill the assignment of being able to cause for, uh, for, for, dis for Jesus Christ himself, the very Jesus Christ, to be discredited. And so that's what we have to begin to look at. It's, you know what? The gift comes without repentance. Right. But if he can if he can take your character, and let me tell you something, I believe the spirit of offense is one of the key weapons of um, bewitchment. Mm -hmm. Because what spirit of offense does, and the second weapon of, a, another weapon of bewitchment is a bad reputation. Mm. Mm. A bad reputation. That's why people will always say, "Well, who your mama them is? Who who your people is? Mm -hmm. You know who your, who your people is." And when they find out who your people is, they determine based on who your people is and whether or not you are credible or whether or not, oh child, she not about nothing. He not about nothing. You know, it might be bond explain. Mm -hmm. And so what begins to and so that's what begins to happen. You end up with a bad reputation because of the spirit of offense. Now let me show you what the spirit of offense looks like, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like in my own life. My mother taught me how to cast out devils. My mother taught me how to do deliverance. My mother taught me about the gifts of healing. I know about this these levels of things from my mother. My mother got offended at a place of worship where she was actively in deliverance ministry and actively in healing ministry. She got bewitched and became inflamed at uh, the pastors about what, whatever it was. She left there and started going to a church, became unrooted and unplanted as a pop to be planted. She left there out of the spirit of offense and she allowed for the spirit of offense to misplace her and put her in another realm, put her in another ring, another boxing match that was not hers. Mm. And so now they diagnosed my mother with, and it was a quick work. Two years ago, my mom was working as a licensed mental health counselor, 2016. Within, the, within from 2016 to 2017, my mom's mental health began to deteriorate. On paper, diagnostically, they don't see anything wrong with her brain, anything wrong with her mind, her lab work, or anything on paper. But when you look at her from day to day, it's not there, gone bewitchment so do not allow for being bewitched to move you out of place mm. to move you out of place because ultimately it wants to destroy you to the point of your your character and your integrity to the point of you know what I heard Apostle Cole saying, I don't even want to do this. I wasn't built for this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this no more. Y'all can mm -hmm. have this. You can have the church. Mm -hmm. I just want to be saved and I just want to go right. to heaven. Right. Just mm -hmm. give me a nine to five job. Let me go get a check from somebody else and we good because I don't have to do this. And that's ultimately what, be, what, what bewitchment really wants for you to be able to do. It wants mm -hmm. you to lay down your assignment. It wants for you to lay down your cross mm -hmm. and it wants for you to, um, it wants for you to be able to, um, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, um, uh, so that's what happened to my mom. Um, one of the things I think Apostle Cole was intrigued about is I'm going to tell you the second way what bewitchment looks like as well. It is very dangerous for us to think that we do not have a responsibility as parents to our adult children. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. It is dangerous for us to think that we do not have a responsibility to our adult children. Even now, you have the authority to serve an apostolic injunction or a parental injunction against every demonic agenda and every demonic force that even comes against your adult children. And the reason why many of us are having so many issues with our adult children is because when we when they turn 18, you told them so long, you told them you told them goodbye, and then now you started looking at well, what what's the problem? And so now I'm looking at the the life of my son, and he reminds me so much of Samson. Because we look at Samson was a judge by he was a judge by day, 
but I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use the long term because this ain't my scope. If it was mine, I'd say this. But he was a trickster at night. Yes. <laughs> he was a pimp daddy at night. So he was doing his thing in the daytime. You know, wow. he was a judge, you know, what you know, doing whatever we gotta do. But it was like, you know, he was at Beach Week at night. <laughs> so, wow. you know, here we go. You know, he wanna be with the honeys, he wanna be with the girls, he wanna be with all of that. And if we remember one of the doorways for him was he got inflamed about his wife. He got inflamed about a situation with his wife and then now we start seeing where now Delilah starts being positioned and she starts coming into play and guess what his his ministry failed his church failed his livelihood failed his character and his integrity failed because she was bewitched as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she took a bribe mm -hmm. And so now you see, now you're seeing political implications. Remember, bewitchment is not about, just, it wasn't about Samson. Remember, Samson was preordained to come into the earth realm to take the Philistines out. Yes, he was a judge, but his assignment was to take the Philistines out. Your assignment is to take out an entity. Your assignment is to root up, is to pull up and pluck up, and it's all, but it's also to build. So what is God calling you to root up and to pluck up, and what is he calling you to build that the spirit of bewitchment wants to cause for obstacles and wants to cause for derailments to come into play to cause you not to be able to do any of those things? And so my son... Um, God bless him. Um, it, it was, it's amazing. He was, um, he probably will get me, but he probably won't be watching this. My son, today is Wednesday. My son, I got a call from his ex-girlfriend Monday morning that he was in jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's never been to jail before in his life. He's in jail. Quote, he's in jail for a domestic battery. Okay. So, one of the things that is happening with my son in this young lady, and I want you all to understand the, the, the how bewitchment looks, how it looks in the lives of our children, especially it's because this young lady, my son is in jail on Monday. She has a, a, a one of her children's father is in prison for killing one of her boyfriends in her bed. So my son in jail, one boyfriend dead, one baby daddy in prison, and one baby daddy is an ex-convict. So what begins to happen is we have these spirits of bewitchment that will actually attach themselves to bloodlines and will actually attach themselves to a family and will actually attach themselves by way of a demonic bed or a demonic bed. Will attach themselves by a demonic bed or a demonic bed. So it is my belief that that this girl has a spirit that is attached to her. That is one of the things of bewitchment. We talked about Simon the sorcerer, and one of the one of the weapons of bewitchment is attachment. She has an attachment to her that destroys men in her life by any means necessary. And the young man that was killed was supposed to be my son. Mm. Mm. He thought he was killing my son. And so we have so so yeah it's 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 deep. It is it's very deep. And had and had my grandmother not been a witch, you wouldn't have been able to tell me this was not possible. You would not have you would not have been able to tell me. You you couldn't have told me if I even would have thought that. I would have said, girl, you off. I would not have arrows. And we are actually the 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 bow and the string. And so what begins to be what begins to happen, the enemy will even come talk to you and whisper to you about your own child. The enemy will come and whisper to you about your own child and tell you, you know what, child, they ain't gonna never do right. They, they'll never do, they'll never be this, they'll never do that. They'll tell you that about your own kid. That spirit of bewitchment, it is very, 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 very cunning. So now, so now we're dealing, so now we're so now we're dealing with this. He did get out of jail because he had never been before on his own ROR, his own own recognizance. He did get out of that. But let me tell you further how this spirit of bewitchment is operating. Once again, it creates a bad reputation. So now my son says, um, so now my son says, 
I talked to him yesterday. He said, Mama, he said, people calling me and people texting me about, hey, I saw that you was on the ledger. I saw that you were on the blogger. I saw this and I saw all of these different dynamics that were happening. And it all came to cause for him to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. It all came for him to have a bad reputation. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he works for the city of West Palm Beach. He's been working there for five mm -hmm. years and he's a barber. So he has clientele. So it all came to cause for him to have, to create a bad reputation for him. It all came for him to be painted in a certain light, to be painted in a, to be painted in a certain way. And so now what the spirit of bewitchment does, is Apostle Ryan McJimson, he prophesied this over my life. There is a spirit called the spirit of cockatrice. And that spirit of cockatrice, I got my notes here because I had to outline them uh, so I wouldn't be taking long. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Well. This is good. So we have a spirit of cockatrice, which is actually found in, um, I like this one here even better. Spirit of cockatrice is found in Isaiah 59, 4 through 5. And it talks about no one calls for justice. No one um, pleads for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. They hatch viper's eggs and weave spider's webs. He who eats of their eggs dies, and from that which is crushed, a viper breaks out. And so this scripture is talking about the spirit of cockatrice. And so when um, Apostle Cole began to talk about abdicate, the spirit of cockatrice, it is a, it is a spirit of legislation. It is a it is a spirit of legislation. It is what it is. So it is a part of abdication because when you come into the courtroom, depending on if you are guilty or innocent, you're going to have to you're going to have to <laughs> be abdicated. You're going to lay something down. And so when you when you're dealing with this cockatrice spirit, it is it's a spirit of legislation and what it does. And we and I believe we experience this at the at contagious ministry on um, what this does is it comes and. It, it it first it, it is a defamation of character. Mm -hmm. It is issues of libel and because libel is printed form. Mm -hmm. That means people start texting about you. That means people start sending emails about you. That means people start sending inboxes about you. So it is a spirit of libel as well. Published false statements that are damaging to a person's reputation. Written defamation. It is a spirit of lies. It is a bewitchment causes for a slandering spirit to begin to orchestrate um, and begin to happen. It publishes by third party information. Mm -hmm. So you send a text to somebody, you send an inbox to somebody, you send an email to somebody because you and this person having a heated confrontation, you having heated fellowship, they'll take what you said and they'll screenshot it and they'll begin to slingshot it around to everybody else. But what they don't do is they don't slingshot what they said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus. That's the, that's it. They don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They, they, tell, they tell parts of the truth and then the spirit of the cockatrice, it begins, to, um, it begins to twist the truth and then it begins to cause a defamation of character and it begins to cause for there to be, um, there begins to cause for there to be distorted perceptions. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that happens to us as high functioning leaders every day. And the challenge of it is that in, 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 in your humanity, you want to go off. In your listen, I, and I, don't, I don't always succeed in that. I'm gonna be, I'm a transparent preacher, preacher. And you want to go off, you want to pop off, you want to say some things, but I'm gonna tell you what it will do. Because oftentimes we want to look at the spirit of bewitchment, but what it will do is it will challenge you with who you really are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to look at the person that's causing the ruckus, but at the end of the day, I'm responsible to I'm responsible to fulfill my purpose in God, and that is to glorify Him in everything that I do, even when the spirit of the cockatrice comes against me, even when bewitchment is trying to operate in my life, even when bewitchment is trying to slander my name and cause me to have a bad reputation, um, even when it's causing me to be able to want, wanting me to be able to do that. Listen, I want to go slap off. But now God is not, not God saying, watch yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Because because you have to be holy in all things. You have to be holy in not only just what you say out your mouth, but sometimes your actions and your facial expressions have to be holy. Mm -hmm. And I have not mastered the facial expressions <laughs> yet. But God is saying, I need for all of that to be holy. Exactly. So now, <laughs> yeah. so, you, so so that is, and that is one of the ways that we overcome in the courtroom of heaven is by righteousness. Mm -hmm. We overcome in the courtroom of heaven by holiness. Mm -hmm. So now we have the accuser of the brethren, like it is said in 1210, bewitchment comes to cause for, like, like uh, Apostle McGinsey said, for people to be fascinated. Mm -hmm. People like to tell good rumors. Mm -hmm. Girl, let me tell you what she sent me. Let me tell you what, yeah, yeah, I did that. I did. I, 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 I didn't cuss at nobody. I didn't say nothing that wasn't right. I didn't do any of that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you all this nugget with the, with dealing with this bewitchment. I'm like, they sometimes my spiritual parents really do the most. They do. <laughs> but the spiritual of bewitchment, I started dealing with this back in September with my sister, and she and I were having an argument via text and what she did even though I said nothing out of the way or out of line when I went through this checklist of the spirit of litigations everything that she did to me it checked off wow. she would Jesus. take my text and she would sit she would group send them to my children to my aunts that lived in Alabama to her wow. cousin that lived in Georgia even though I said nothing wrong found no fault but what God revealed to me in that, he said, everything that you said was right. He said, but it wasn't the kingdom response. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus, help us, Lord. Jesus. He said, he said, you actually said nothing wrong. He said, but it was not the kingdom response. Wow. You know, now let me, let me throw something in. And I think that's good. Because sometimes we don't know how much people are watching us. Yes. Right. And it doesn't mean that we're not human. It doesn't mean that we don't feel what we feel. But people are watching us. Mm -hmm. So something happened one day. And um, we went through this situation. And I wish that I could say we've never experienced this in ministry. <laughs> yes. I wish I could say that. Mm -hmm. I wish I could say I only experienced it one time. But everything you're saying is so powerful. And somebody's getting free today. And somebody's also being able to gain another level of discernment based mm -hmm. on your experience. And so uh, what I didn't know was I have, we have a spiritual son that lives in another city uh, out, uh, out uh, basically out west. And so he called me and he said, man, I have watched how you have handled this situation. Wow. I have been watching and I've watched how on social media people came after your character. They came after your name. They came after everything that you had. And I didn't see you one time even deal with it, say anything about it, post anything about it. He said, I've been watching your messages. I've watched you in the pulpit. You've not said anything about it. You've not, you've not retaliated. He said, you had every right to probably say anything you wanted to, but you didn't. He said, I was watching. He said, man, and that's why I can continue to follow you because you actually didn't do what I know I would have done. It would have took everything <laughs> in me, not yes. just to say something, yes. but yes. to go get some of them folks that was cutting up, acting crazy. And I think that that's the thing that we have to look at because again I talked to a leader just the other day who was doing some tremendous work not pastoring a church but has a network of churches and a network uh, of ministries and was just sharing just the, the the trauma and the dramatic situation that they're going through and you'd be amazed because I'm telling you I don't care listen I don't care what people say I don't care what people think I'm telling you I don't care who you are if you when this thing comes against you yes. and that spirit comes against yes. you and that assassination of your character comes yes. and that that Thing, and it comes and listen and you can't sleep I don't care how deep you are I don't care how anointed you are and you lay in there you can't sleep you can't think straight that witch is on you and you, you're you going through this whole process because some people are bewitched and some people are the are uh, uh, are the byproduct of, of people being with, uh, bewitched yes. concerning them. Yes. And so this is what Apostle Paul was right. He said, man, who is it that got in your ear? And literally, I came there, man, and presented the case of Jesus Christ. And here you are now, literally coming out of the teaching that you've been taught. Mm -hmm. And that's why he comes back in 5 and 1 says, man, stand fast in the liberty. Right. Where we don't get back entangled with that bondage. Yes. Don't get bewitched again. Don't let the enemy come into you. So what you're saying is freeing somebody. Because listen, one of you watching, one of you watching has been uh, even a, another friend of mine, uh, and I'll let them tell their story uh, when they come on, but they were sharing with me how for, uh, for over five years, 
Matter of fact, for almost 10 years, somebody was trying to bewitch people against them. Mm -hmm. Literally tried to bewitch them, even people in their own home for 10 years. I'm not talking oh, about yes. this thing. Yes. I'm not talking about this thing where somebody tries Absolutely. to assassinate you Absolutely. for 30 days or 60 days Absolutely. and you dealing with that thing. No, Absolutely. I'm talking about years. We, for, for years, this, this demonic uh, assignment of hell begins to come against you to try to assassinate your character, assassinate your name, uh, uh, take your strength away. And so now for years, and it literally Literally, people don't see the other side of it because what they don't see, Prophet Latanya, is they don't see that you don't have the that you don't have the desire to preach, that you don't have you. It's almost like you in zombie mode, you yeah. in a coma almost, yeah. where you don't feel you in a spiritual coma where you don't feel like preaching, you don't feel like teaching, you're anointed, you've got wisdom, you've got information, you've got knowledge, you've got vision, right. you've got creativity, you got all of this stuff, but something is bewitching you, and you literally are in zombie mode and do not have the ability to really present right the the power and the anointing with which you normally walk in. Don't have to and, and that's what happened with that thing with Samson. It literally it abdicated his position. Absolutely. I had never even thought about it. We, we always talk about Samson and Delilah, but we always, I'm telling you, for 20 some years, I forgot the fact that he was a judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he's a literal judge. He literally has authority that he is literally relinquished because of his proclivities exactly. and because of his desires and his internal inclinations that were voids in his life that literally caused him to open up a, a, a wound and a place in him that gave the devil legal access to literally take him out of place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jesus. And that's what we're dealing with so much. And that's why I'm saying, you know, we can't afford to um, stop praying for our adult children. You know, Apostle, even when you're talking about Samson, um, it is just unbelievable that this journey that God has had me on for the last... Um, for the last 90 days, the last 75 days, you know, Apostle, I am getting inboxes from women daily. Mm. Texts from women that I never, like you say, you look at people and you really don't know what's mm. going on. Mm. I need to meet with you. Mm -hmm. I need to meet with you because my husband walked out last night. Mm -hmm. I'm getting inboxes from, from women. I'm getting inboxes from people who husbands are pastors or husbands are ordained as this and ordained as that. And they're saying, Prophet Latonya, he just packed his stuff and he just walked out. He just left. Mm -hmm. And not only that, and now I'm having to leave and pack up and go take me and my child and me and my children to a shelter. We got to go to the shelter. We got to move out because I can't afford to live here by myself. I, and I'm talking about men of God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who've been bewitched, right? Who have been? I'm talking about men of God who have been bewitched. So we're talking about this thing, you know, and you know, my own personal testimony. You know, I won't get into that, you know, because it'll be his at a later date. But you know, having to live with bewitchment is something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. having to having to live with it is something else. And then, um, and then now not coming into the admonition of it as to. Is this what this is? You know, um, so we're dealing with we're dealing with this so strongly in the body of Christ, and I think that this is gonna um, bless it wide open because we have women who are now abandoned. We have, and I'm not just talking about abandoned, abandoned emotionally and mentally. I'm talking about women who are abandoned physically, inboxing me and texting me, and don't know how they're gonna pay their bills. Mm -hmm. Because their husband is the breadwinner, they don't know how their children are gonna eat. They don't know that, or they don't know. They don't even know, you know, well, how much was the water bill? How much was the light bill? Okay, let me let me give you something. This is why we have to be so careful to let and to watch how the enemy is cunning. The Bible said he right. was crafty, he was cunning. Yes. And what yes. happens is, do you remember I talked to you about the word bis biscano, yes. which is the word bewitch, but the word ibascante is a derivative which means envy. Yes. And so somebody can listen, oh my God, somebody can literally see how your husband treats you, how your husband treats yes. you, your relationship. Absolutely. And then as a result, they can envy the position and the relationship you have. And then as a result, see, this is what happened with David and Amnon and Absalom. Absalom envied the relationship that Amnon had with him. Therefore, his job, his goal was to bewitch people to remove that position. If, if they can't remove you, they'll try to remove you by, by, by virtue yes. of, of, of defaming you. Yeah. And so what you're saying is powerful because I can almost guarantee that in every one of those situations, the, the woman, the women knew that the man was married. He knew and she knew he was married and she looked at the fact that he was a good breadwinner. He was a good man. He took good care of his family, saw that and desired that. And as a result of desiring it, put, put the bewitchment on the man. 
Maybe he came to work one day, just maybe, I'm just hypothetically oh, talking about, maybe one day he came to work one day and he was looking a little down. And so the thing was, yes. you know, you're too good of a man to be looking down like that. See, it's bewitchment. It's the subtle things. Flattery. The flattery. Yeah, the, the amazement of you. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, I'm going to wear extra perfume. Listen. And come stand by your desk. And be like, how you doing today? You feeling any better? Look like look like you, you ain't being taken care of. See, this is the kind of stuff messy. that happens in those relationships. Messy. Right, messy. But it's bewitchment. Yeah. And so we don't look at it like that. We don't look at some of this stuff that's going on. And the same thing happens with the same thing happens with uh, same thing happened with women. You know, Absolutely. but there was a void in Absolutely. the person's life, and as a result, the enemy would, if they had been full of the power of the Holy Ghost, full of the Word, full, in their right for play, they would have never got, but if you're tired, if you're going Absolutely. through different uh, marital situations, yes. all of a sudden, it right. comes in and it hits you, and before you know it, you bewitched, and you've given up all of your information to Delilah of having pillow talk. Your, your strengths and everything, and what we have to understand, and women, Jesus. you know, we, we're going in this direction, you know, um, and I'll just stay here just briefly, but one of the things I do know about even do, do, with adultery in marital situations that usually adultery is a sin of convenience. That's one thing. And another thing, and that usually adultery, and I want to reinforce this as Apostle Cole just said, so if you are the woman that is dating the married man, Mm. Or if you are the woman that's married to the man that's cheating, what we have to understand is this is that the woman, as Apostle Cole said, you know, sometimes we have to realize that, um, me, you know, me and I'm just going to say this. Sometimes y'all can't be so flattered as to think that it's really all about you. Right. right? Oh, yeah. Right. The issue. Is after, they're after the power and the position. The power and the position. And the they, provision. Exactly. <laughs> oh. They like the fact that, oh. You got red bottles? Yeah, he bought me some. He usually get me some for Valentine's Day. Yeah, mm. he do that. Oh, you got this? Yeah, you, yeah. Because my husband used to dress me. Mm. He was my haberdasher. Jeez. He was the one that dressed me. He was the, the one that bought my... Yeah, he was the one that <laughs> bought all my... Talk. He was the one that bought all my clothes. He was the one that bought my shoes. All I had to do was say I wanted a blue dress or a red dress. I wanted something with polka dots. I wanted plaid. And he made it happen. Mm -hmm. So the woman from the outside is she is looking at that she's looking at how well you're being treated. She's looking at that. So she's actually, like you said, Apostle, being bewitched by that. Mm -hmm. She's being bewitched by. Listen, I think I got here vain imagination. Mm -hmm. Girl, I'm gonna have to get your notes. Look, I'm gonna have to get your notes for the ebook. <laughs> what? That's a vain, vain imagination. And what happens is narcissism and arrogance comes in. Wow. A narcissistic uh, mindset, and then you, and then a place of arrogance comes in. You know, with, with, when we start dealing with this spirit of bewitchment, it's, it's, you know what? It is something to think that I could say something about my man or woman of God or any man or woman of God. It is something to, so it is something to think that I can do that, and and be in such arrogance and pride to think that God will not judge me in that. Wow. And I think that's I think that's an issue, and we're dealing with doctrines of devils. We're dealing with doctrines of man that are causing for people to to literally be bewitched. But somebody said, "Well, what's the strategy and, and what's the prayer?" Let me tell you something. The biggest thing that we have to be able to use is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to lose, use the blood of Jesus. Our Revelation, I got 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. Because what does the blood of Jesus do? The blood of Jesus prophesies. Mm. Ah, Lord. According to Hebrews 12, 20 through through 24, the blood has spoken and the blood will speak. Mm -hmm. And it is speaking. So we have to be able to apply the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you something. There is no accusation that the enemy can send against you that the blood of Jesus does not cover. Wow. So when we come into the courtroom of heaven and we come into the throne, we come into the courtroom of heaven, we have to come under the blood. And one of the mistakes that we try to make is we try to, we try to go back and forth with the accuser of brethren. What you have to do is come under the blood, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, whatever the accuser of the brethren say, mm-hmm, I did that. Mm -hmm. I sure did. Mm -hmm. So now you got to accept that and you got to repent because as long as you, this is what we lose in the battle. We keep trying to go back and forth with the accuser of the brethren. And let me tell you something, usually he's not going to win because he's holding an archive of our past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, <laughs> we for, listen, we forget stuff. 
We forget, and he's holding the archive of our past. And so what happens is the blood of Jesus, we come under the blood of Jesus, watch this, and then we repent, and then we release our testimony. And so then we so we so we have to be able to uh, we have to be able to sit under the blood of Jesus. Why? Because it prophesies, and then the blood of Jesus gives us the right to um, forgive and to be forgiven. Mm. And we have to come into agreement with what the blood is saying. Mm -hmm. What is the DNA of the blood of Jesus saying? What is what 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 is, what, is, what is the DNA of the blood of Jesus saying? And we have to come in agreement with what the blood of Jesus is saying. And so many times we, so many times we just settle for what the accuser says. He's we settle for what he says we're not. We settle for what he says we've done. Okay, yeah, I did that, but you know what? That's under the blood. Submit yourselves and oftentimes we're not submitting ourselves first. It's a submit yourself first and then the enemy will flee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we have to be so then we have to be able to do that. And then so then the blood of Jesus testifies for us in the courtroom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And every accusation can be answered with the blood. <clears throat> what are the things? <clears throat> One of the things that happened in Apostle Brian McGist, we talked about this um, um, uh, at the midnight hour the other night, is that you can command for the enemy to expose himself. Mm -hmm. When you come into the courtroom of heaven and you're in your prayer time <clears throat> and you have decided you're going into the courtroom of heaven intentionally, you can literally ask your accuser to show themselves. Mm -hmm. It may come as a dark figure. You may feel a certain type of presence. Um, who knows? A certain person may open the door and say, hey, how you doing? Who knows? <laughs> but you can literally ask for the, your accuser to show themselves. Mm -hmm. Because in the courtroom of law from last time, I used to be a nurse in the jail. And from my understanding, there are certain cases that if, one of, if the plaintiff or the respondent does not show up, mm -hmm. then it goes in the favor of the person mm -hmm. who does show up. Mm -hmm. I sued a car company one time because they repossessed my car illegally. They decided not to show up. And the judge said, well, because they didn't show up, then I'm giving you everything that you paid into this car and then somebody go get you a new car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they did not show up. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, and I know we're running out of time. No, no, we got plenty of time. I love this. <laughs> Listen, me, I wouldn't rush you for nothing in the world. Let me tell you what bewitchment does. Mm. Well, let me tell you what the accusations of the accuser does. The accusations of the accuser will pull you into a boxing ring and a boxing match that you are not equipped for. Mm. Wow. I watched a clip. Um, it's a young man here. Some of you all may not know him, but everybody knows um, Evander Holyfield. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Everybody knows Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. It's a young man in my area. I live in Polk County, Florida. His name is Humberto. They actually have a training gym there. And he gave a five-minute clip about being in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. And he talked about how this guy knows every inch of the ring. Mm. He knows every inch. And what he does is time management. He watches every now and then. He'll do some jabs, and he'll look at the clock. He'll do, some, he'll do jabs, and he'll look at the clock. And I say all of that because oftentimes what happens, and this is what I found myself in just recently, and I had to pump my brakes. The enemy will get you into arguments. Mm -hmm. He'll get you into conversations. He'll get you into false burdens. And what happens is those conversations, those arguments, and those false burdens, they will pull you into a boxing match mm -hmm. where the enemy knows the territory of that boxing ring and you do not. I already mm -hmm. set you up. You already set up for the faith. Let me give you, oh God, let me give you a transparent one. I was getting trouble with this trend. Then my wife, she have a pretty smile and she be like, Lord, what is this crazy man you ready to say? So let me tell you something happened because what you just said was powerful. I was having a conversation with someone who uh, was trying to bewitch people. Listen now. Mm. And this person, this person was doing just that. They had already set the stage because they had somebody else who was listening into the conversation to yeah. bait me into mm -hmm. this thing, mm -hmm. the, the accuser yes. of the brethren part. So they had yes. bait, they were baiting me into a conversation to get me out of character yes. so the other people could listen and they could have a witness. Come on, because sometimes they, you have to have a witness in the court of law. Absolutely. And so they were looking to bring a witness into it because they were trying to bait me into this conversation. 
And so the Holy Spirit, I know this is for, for deep people and people that, you know, I know y'all love me, but I just politely just hung up the phone because I realized there was no other conversation. Yes. I could not get a word in edgewise. I couldn't win. I just kind of just uh, hang up the phone and I said, praise the Lord, because I knew it wasn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. That's real good. Yeah. 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 They'll, they'll bait you into it. And I'll, I'll give you all simple things that we get baited into that eventually will challenge your character and challenge your witness in Jesus Christ because in the courtroom there is a witness. So we overcome, according to Revelation 12 and 11, we overcome by the blood of the, te blood of our, blood of the um, Jesus, blood of the, lamb, blood yeah. of the lamb and our testimony, right? So um, I remember one time that I was um, at work and they baited me. And I want you all to understand this stuff is... This stuff is, you can be bewitched or you can get entangled into conversations or your character can get entangled into things. Sometimes just, we don't think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things where we can sit here and we can, you know, we're at work and they can be talking about your supervisor. They can be talking about another employee and the next thing you know, you're like, oh yeah, child, cause you know, she made me sick and you know, and, and then before you know it, you are, you are now co-signing. Mm. You are now the accuser of the brethren yourself. Wow. Mm. And this is the thing that we need to understand that, that we're like Samson. We were, we, uh, we, we, were, we were formed before, you know, uh, in our mother's womb. God, before we were in our mother's womb, God knew us. He knew our orientation. He knew our consecration. We were anointed and we were called and we were all of those different things. But this, but this is the challenge. Sometimes we can become snares to ourselves. And I have been on that bandwagon. I have been, you get to talking about other people and you get to doing all these things. And then now when you want to talk, talk about Jesus and you want to talk about God and you want to talk about well come to my church because we doing this and come come to the love fest and people are like I'm not coming to no love fest I'm not coming to nothing else because you just sat here with us and you you said you became a viper yourself mm -hmm. you become yes you became a, a, a confederate you became mm -hmm. uh, you became and you became an alliance yourself and when God began to take me through um, dealing with a particular spirit called the spirit of Leviathan and dealing with some things in my own personal life and one of the most sacred relationships in my life and I was dealing with pride and arrogance and so God had to challenge me he said okay but you looking to see pride and arrogance in somebody else but God say is pride and arrogance in you wow ooh, ooh. <laughs> is pride and arrogance in you because a lot of times we could sit and we could say, oh, that person is this and oh, this person is that. But bewitchment comes, as Apostle said earlier, when you fail to acknowledge or realize where you are, mm -hmm. where you're at on this map. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, where, where you are at this map, I never forget it. It's something so simple. But you know what? It marred my it marred my character as a Christian for quite a few weeks. I had an instance, they were talking about this girl, i never forget her name was Casey. She wanted to take her little girls out for Halloween. And here it is, they come baiting me. I'm pastoring the church. They come baiting me about, oh, I'm telling you, tell her she shouldn't take her children out for trick or treating on Halloween because this, this, this is pagan, this, this is that, blah, 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 blah. So now I let them bait me. I get in this conversation about Halloween is pagan and Halloween is this and Halloween is that and it's all of this, all of this kind of stuff. I went in my office and God said, you were dead wrong. Mm. He said, you were wrong. He said, because all these holidays pagan. Easter is pagan. Christ Christmas, all, all of it is pagan. And she's not professing to be a believer. Mm. A wise man wins souls. Mm. And here it was, I'm just rambling off the scripture. This girl looking at me like, what? When I should have been ministering salvation to her. Mm, wow. When I should have been ministering redemption to her. And that's the thing that I'm talking about. Don't allow for bewitchment and these false arguments and these false burdens to get you into a place where now you, you, you're, you're in a boxing match that you don't even belong in. Mm -hmm. I had to go, God made me go apologize to this young lady, say, baby, take your children trick or treat, and that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go on, take your children. As soon as we become real religious and legalistic about stuff, right. when it's the it's not the letter that we need to fight uh, with people, it's the spirit. Because mm -hmm. you could draw her into this thing from a whole different exactly. perspective. 
and With I lost besides that. killing her, yeah. And I lost, no, and, I, and I lost the opportunity to do that. So this bewitchment is working in all types of ways. But the ultimate way that it's working is working for you to lose your inheritance, for you to lose your legacy. It's working for you to use your credibility. It's working for you to lose your character. Because even mm -hmm. when we begin to look at religious, you know, um, not religious, we, we're looking at governmental capacities. That's what's happening in the government. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in the Senate. It's happening in the White House. There is a strong spirit of bewitchment there mm -hmm. that is just out of control. Mm -hmm. I mean, the operating period is out of control, but it is literally growing all seven heads of Leviathan. Because Leviathan has seven heads. Mm -hmm. It's growing all seven heads. <laughs> we got hydras everywhere mm -hmm. in the White House and in the government and in these political schemes and, and these political paradigms. And so we're looking at, and then look at what's happening. Look at how bewitchment is operating through the cockatrice spirit here in Florida. The Democrat office look is now putting in a lawsuit. <laughs> what did I just say? Cockatrice is a spirit of litigation. Mm -hmm. So now we see how all of this stuff is entangled. And so I'm saying all this to say we have more to pray and more to war for, war, for, war over than what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's true. We have more to be concerned about than what we really think. We have the standing in humility and not responding as flesh. Yes, standing in humility and not responding in flesh is definitely um, a, a successful um, is definitely a successful uh, weapon because sometimes we do have to have a season of hush. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus, not a season have, of hush. We have to have a season of hush, or if y'all like this one better, we have to have a season of the shut up. Yes. <laughs> season of the shut up. Wow, we have good. to have a season of that. Um, and, and it's times where, let me tell you something, it's times where people will come against your character. And and, th and see, this was the test that I kept failing because I always want, I want to vindicate myself. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to, I want to silence the accuser on my own. But God is requiring you to shut up, hush and allow for him to vindicate you because he can vindicate you a whole lot better. Let me tell you something. God's vindication comes with dividends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's vindication comes with interest. God's vindication comes with increase. But when you try to vindicate yourself, mm -hmm. a, a lot of times you end up making things worse than what they were, what they already were. Jesus made a statement. He said, uh, he said, did y'all, did you say this? He said, thou say this. He was real simple. Thou say this. Or, or, or Satan made the Lord rebuke you. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm. so sometimes we have to use wisdom. So one of the things that we have to begin to do, we have to use the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to go into the courtroom of heaven. You have to. You have. You got to understand. And the reason why going in the courtroom of heaven and legislating from that and, and the abdication, because if you if you if you've come into a place of abdication, only the courtroom of heaven can give you back what you laid down. Only the courtroom of heaven can vindicate you once you have, like Adam, once you have abdicated, once you have abdicated your inheritance, like Esau, once you have abdicated your legacy, once you have abdicated your birthright, only the courtroom of heaven can assist you to get that back. So you have to be able to use the blood of Jesus, go in the courtroom of heaven in a place of repentance, allow for the blood of Jesus to prophesy to your situation. Then number two, you do need to release apostolic and prophetic decrees because what are you prophesying? Mm -hmm. And what is it that you are in agreement with? And I'm going to close with this with saying, and then the apostle can finish from there. One of the things that I, I look at what God told me to tell you all today is um, Psalms, I think it's Psalms uh, 1. Psalms once um, it talks about wise counsel because we talked about the strategy and one of the things we have to do Psalms one talks about wise counsel and it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season whose, whose leaf shall not wither and whoso whatever he does shall prosper but it talks about um, being planted in wise counsel Acts 20 and 27 says you have to get the whole counsel of God and me, so I don't always get the whole counsel of God. <laughs> you get high headed, you get inflamed, you know, it's, don't let people deal with your children. Oh God, I'm all over the place. And I realized this the other day when this was happening with my son. I had one son that was in the hospital on Sunday night. I woke up Monday morning. The other one is in jail. My daughter Aquiel is sick. I uh, got stuff going on with my baby girl. And then I got my own life. But the thing of it is, we have to get 
these things off of the throne of our heart and we have to put Jesus Christ on the throne. Mm -hmm. And so I spent the whole day allowing for my strings bewitch me. Because this chick called me and, and the apostle was saying something about being in your own house for years. Did, who called somebody's mama to talk about their son like a dog to them? Mm -hmm. Who does that? Mm -hmm. So the enemy doesn't care who he uses for bewitchment. Does not care. This girl wanted to call and talk to me about my own son. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to throw my own son under the bus. Now, he might did all of that that you say, but I'm not going to throw my son under the bus. Mm -hmm. So we have to get the whole counsel of God because people of God, you will spend a whole day. Mm -hmm. You will spend weeks and you will spend years allowing uh, being, you being bewitched yourself and allowing for all these different people and situations to be on the throne of your heart. Mm -hmm. You have to evict these things off the throne of your heart and you have to seek the whole counsel of God. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 11, 2 through 3 says, the, sentence, the spirits of God are the spirit of the Lord. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and fear. These become weapons against bewitchment. This is how you are going to overcome bewitchment. This is how you're going to overcome the, those mind-boggling spirits, those things that have people in a caged mind. Those things that have your, 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 your children, those things that have your reputation trapped. And I said that to her, and I said, it's the only thing I'm going to say to you, you will not trap my son's reputation. Mm -hmm. You will not trap his reputation. Mm -hmm. So we break every um, entanglement we break every barricade we break every brass cage that has that has the minds of your family, that has the minds of your husbands that has the minds of your children and trap every mind boggling spirit every mind caging spirit we take the battle ram of heaven and we cause for it to be shattered right now in the name of Jesus we cause for every brass gate to be, to be shattered right now in the name of Jesus and just as it was with Samson that we shall take the gates of the enemy and we shall put the gates of the enemy on our backs and leave our enemies exposed. We shall leave the enemy of, of accusation exposed. We shall leave the enemy of arguments exposed. We shall leave the enemy of false burdens exposed. We shall leave the enemy of bad reputations exposed. We shall leave the enemy of delusionment and disillusionment exposed in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that comes against our mind that calls for our minds to be entangled hallelujah that our minds are being renewed and the compassion of our heart is being renewed and even now God is giving us heart transplants from where these um, where these things have come into your life and have made your heart hard and where now you're in a place of anxiety and you're in a place of numbness and you're in a place of callousness and you don't want to feel anymore because you don't want to hurt anymore you don't want to feel anymore because it's too much anymore but I cause for God to come into your heart and begin to cause for your heart to beat again the vasculature of your spiritual heart that it is coming alive Life that is renewed right now and God is causing for you to have a heart transplant and you will operate in the full and whole counsel of God. You will operate in the wisdom of God. You will operate in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. And there will not be any fear on the inside of you. You will operate. Hallelujah. In the love of God. Hallelujah. You will operate in the might of God and operate in the counsel of God in the name of Jesus. And even now, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over them, over the crown of their head and the sole of their feet, every circumstance, every accusation of the enemy, it is covered under the blood. Every legality, every legality. I tell you, in the last 75 days dealing with this spirit of the cockatrice, I have been in five legal situations. Five legal situations, and this thing will cause you not want, not to even want to wake up in the morning. I went. We went from having a car accident. We went from my sister going to the social security office. I have full custody power of attorney of my mother. My sister went to the social security office. Didn't tell me. Had my mom's funds transferred out of my mom's name, put in her name. Didn't tell me about it, and then accused me of misappropriating the funds. So that that would put me in a position of having to be under an investigation. I come against every illegal investigation that is trying to be brought against you. Every false charge that is trying to be brought against you. 
I decree and I declare that the Lord shall vindicate you and you walk in a place of humility. I command for your hearts to be purged. I command for your minds to be purged. I command for you to lose your right to be right in these particular situations and these instances. Every, every, every marine spirit that is in operation in your lives, every marine spirit that's in operation in the lives of your children that's calling for seducing spirits to cause for their future and their legacies to be derailed. Hallelujah. We cancel those assignments right now in the name of Jesus. We dry up every riverbed in the spirit. We dry up every lake in the spirit. We dry up the source of every marine spirit that's operating in your lives right now in the name of Jesus and we banish them to hell. Hallelujah. We banish them them to dry places. We forbid them to operate in the lives of God's people. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God, we thank you for um, your people. We thank you for a good name. We thank you for a good reputation, Father. Hallelujah. Let it be as how when Paul restored Onesimus, hallelujah, that when Onesimus had a bad reputation, hallelujah, Paul said, no, go get him, go, he has to be restored, we have to, his name has to be restored, God is restoring your name, Jesus. God is restoring the name of, restoring the name of your children, restoring the name of your bloodline, restoring the name of your family, we thank you, Father, and it is so, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I say is um I don't really I don't I don't at all uh for the people that God has given to us as um as sons and daughters and the people that have stuck with us through um, just ministry, <laughs> just ministry. I am so appreciative. And, um, you know, one of the things that I always say about my wife is that, um, she has an anointing that when she preaches, it, it oftentimes bring me to, brings me to tears and really, just really ministers to me. But I really got to say the same thing about, uh, Prophet Latanya as a daughter that, um, you know, the last couple of times that she's ministered, I mean, it's like, and this, what you, what you may not see is you may not see that although you're dealing with bewitchment on two or three different levels, you're dealing with it like in three, four, this thing has been a, a onslaught that's come against you. Yes. But the reason why it was allowed to come against you is so that because the prophet of God that you are, the anointing that you carry, the intercessor that you are, is it, you, are, you would have never seen the understanding of the chasma crater had you not had you not dealt with it individually yourself. And so there are some things that we go through and it's not for us. It's so that we can then be a lethal weapon. There is a uh, there is a thing um, in in that the tanks have the the M, M what well, used to be the M ones, uh, but the Abram uh, is one of our main battle tanks in the United States Army, uh, as well as I think the Marines. The Marines have I think they use them too. But anyway, there is a round, and this round is called a sable round. And so I've been out a few years now, but this this tank round now, Apostle Reggie uh, was a was a was in tank battalions. I know he was artillery, but uh, but this sabo round literally can it, it's used for other tanks. And so it's not a round. You know, you wouldn't shoot this round at a person because this round is is, is huge. So it's like this this big around and probably this long. So it's like you know two you know three four foot long. And actually, you know, this big round. So you wouldn't shoot this at a, at a person. But what this round will do is it will go in one side of the tank and it burns so hot and so fast that it literally sucks everything inside of the tank out wow. the other side of that other hole. Wow. And so, again, it's not a round that you shoot to disable a, 
a, a person or a small vehicle, but it's used for other tanks. Mm -hmm. And so as you were praying, I realized that in the arsenal of God, it is necessary for us to be around that is prepared to be able to destroy the, the, the weapons and the assault of the enemy. And so when I, you know, when I look at you guys, I mean, it's tremendous. And so I, I, as a leader, I'm honored. I am thankful for the people that God has put and given us in relationship with, uh, even as sons and daughters. And we're very cautious with that word. We used to use that word and be like, no, I don't use that word that much no more. People that we say they're son or daughter, they really got to be uh, because... The reality is, is you can have your own ministry doing your own thing anywhere, uh, but you're, you're connected, you're committed, you're submitted. And so I'm, I'm always really just humble. But as you were ministering, you could feel the presence of God. Man, when you got through praying, it's like if somebody was dealing with that spirit of bewitchment, they got delivered today. Uh, and, and even the articulation, uh, the, 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 the transparency. Uh, and so I'm really appreciative uh, tell them how they, the most, most of the people that are with us already know you, but tell people who don't know who you are, how they can connect with you. Tell them about your websites. Tell them, tell, tell us about your ministry. Tell them about what you're doing. Um, and then soon you're going to be able to tell them about the books because uh, I'm not going to let you stop until you get all the books out of you because they in you, girl. you got too much in you to not have books on the bookshelves. Yes. And, uh, and that's always my goal. I, I don't feel I've done a good job when I have books out. You know, we just released uh, our latest book. For those of you that don't know, uh, Sudden Breakthrough. It's not a shameless plug. It's, it's, uh, it's just a plug. It's a plug. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's Sudden Breakthrough and you can get this Barnes & Noble. I'm not excited about me having it on the shelves of Barnes and Noble. I'm not going to rest until you guys have books on the shelves of Barnes and Nobles as well, because that's what my heart is to see sons and daughters really, really be able to really get their ministries out and be able to really make full proof of who you are and what you've been called to do in the earth. But it was tremendous. So tell us about who you are. Uh, tell us about uh, your ministry, the website, uh, all the things that you're doing. Tell us about the things you got coming up in 2019, the things that you feel like you want to share with us, because uh, I think it's going to be tremendous. Now, we already said you're going to be uh, you're going to be with us in Chattanooga. You're going to be with us in <laughs> Charlotte and you're going to be with us in uh, in Trinidad. So, yes. yes uh, so, Hallelujah. Uh, so I'm excited about those uh, yes. those meetings. And we got a couple more coming up that you're going to be with us. And so we'll, you'll see those things coming out. Uh, yep, Apostle Reggie, I'm, listen, man, please, y'all make me proud. I was watching him early on the Contagious broadcast, and um, I was trying to get ready, so I couldn't catch all of it. But um, it just blesses me, the sons and daughters that God has given us. Tell us what we can, where they can find your, your, your ministry and what you're doing. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited, and I don't know even if I could give you all any, a whole lot of information, because I am actually in... Um you know, it, I'll say this when you when you sit under people such as them and they're always moving and they're always going. And, you know, sometimes he'd be like, OK, prophet, come out of the cave. And sometimes it was like, pause. I'm not I'm really not in the cave. I'm really doing stuff. I'm really doing stuff. And so um, I'm excited because um, um, you can look out for me. He doesn't even know this. I actually have two um, two nonprofits that are being launched. In um, January, so they're actually taking care of the filing. They text me this morning, say, "Hey, it, we filed it, we've done it, we just waited." So um, I'm doing one that is called I4 um, International Network Hubs. I4 International Network Hubs, and it deals with innovation, industry, investment, uh, in, 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 <laughs> innovation, um, investment, <clears throat> industry. And now I'm forgetting one, but anyway, invention. And so, um, and what it deals with is getting, um, really challenging the marketplace, believers and not to come up with creative and, 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 and uh, um, ingenious ideas because we, we, we need to look at other sustainable sources of water. I believe they're here in the earth. We need to look at other sustainable sources of energy. I believe they're in the earth. We need to look at other sources like she's the vice president or president of something that with the children's charters the USA. We need to look at other ways to um, bring our children up in communities, especially the underserved populations. Um, we need to look at all of these different things about transportation, um, all of these different paradigms um, in the earth realm. So that's what I4 is going to be doing. And then I'll, I'll be, and my ministry, Simply Latanya King, the ministries. Come in January, it will be no more. So I can't give y'all the new name yet, but it's okay. If you hit simplylatonya.com, keep doing that, it'll come up. So I got a new name, I'm excited about that. 
so I will tell you this um I do have an ebook that's coming out and it's gonna be it is called the diary of a mad intercessor when it all goes wrong and actually that book is going is really pivoted off of a prophetic word an apostolic thrust an apostle Ryan that Gypsy gave me and my husband on December 1st of 2017 of last year and so I'm gonna chronicle the whole year that I went through after that word that he gave so that's coming out diary mad intercessor when it all went wrong so that's going to be happening i'm going to have a new ministry brand that's coming out i for international um network hubs is coming out so i'm going to be doing that and i'm also a health and wellness coach so it's jewelswellness.com so i got a lot going on jewelswellness.org so i have a lot going on so it's going to be some new things coming out um with that as well and uh, and you're in college and I'm in school yes and I'm in school and I'm going back to get another degree so I'm doing that as well because I believe um, one of the important things with I4 with the, the hubs and networks is this is that I want to be able to create policy changes in healthcare, and I think that that is so needed right now um, and to be able to cause for different paradigms and different streams to happen and how we think about health care and how we envision health care. So I'm going to, I'm doing a public health administration degree and get an MPH for that. So um, so I have that going on um, as well. Plus, hopefully be traveling with them in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, my life is full to say the least. So like you all said, the enemy can't win because he's already won. He's already won on our behalf. We just have to show up. We just got to show up. We don't right. even have to fight. We just got to show up. <laughs> you know, as Apostle said, the M1 and, the, and all that stuff, it fights for us. And so um, I heard they got some digital stuff now that all you got to do is just pre-program it, put in the coordinates and put in the location and then go for you. And I believe that's what God does. When we show up, he puts in the coordinates, he sends the missiles, he sends the firepower, and he shows up for us. But we just have to be obedient and we just have to be faithful. So those are all of the different things. Um that I have up. We got some new series that I'm going to be doing um, next year. I will tell you this. I'm doing a series on called The Power of Re. The Power of R-E. Mm. The Power of Re. Wow. So that's going to be launching in January. So you'll see some stuff being dripped out. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. You can't, you, can't, you can't hang with these folks and not do nothing. I need to show y'all my book list. I came over here to do this live, and now I got like 10 books for homework. Go figure. Well, listen, you know, I, um, I'm i excited. I, I, you know, some, I was doing an interview. I did an interview last night. In this interview I did, one of the questions that was asked was, uh, what brings you your greatest joy in ministry? And I would have to say for me, the thing that brings me the greatest joy is to see both my wife, spiritual sons and daughters, biological sons. You know, I was so excited. I told in the interview, I told I was so excited when Antoine got his first job. <laughs> and so he actually started his first job a couple weeks ago. He's yeah. in San Francisco and uh, actually first job away from home, 23 years old, first job um, making over, you know, making close to six figures. I mean, so, you wow. know, who does that coming right out of college and uh, just tremendous. So that really blessed me. But also to see the things that you guys are doing because that's that's legacy. Right. Uh, and as a leader, um, the, the thing and the, the thing that makes you the most um, at this season of my life, I'm not just trying to do things for me. I'm trying to do things that, that produce yes. legacy. Yes. And, um, you know, and Lisa, baby, you sat here so wonderfully quiet. Most she of the time, today. and uh, you didn't say a whole lot. You said didn't look so cute, but uh, you want to you talk and close to, us out. And um, you know, I, I tell you, I've just truly, truly been blessed. And one of the things, even as you were saying, I think one of the things I really honed in on is we've got to understand and know that we cannot do this alone. We yes. have to work Community. together with other people. Community. We have to allow God to do um, to bring us together. Um, because we are stronger together. You know, us here, you see three of us, but there is an exponential that takes place when we come together. It is not just three, it is it becomes three million. It becomes 300, 300 million because we put our resources and our anointings and our giftings together. And so we have to know that. And, and I think it's so important that even leaders, if, if, if leaders, leaders, leaders would fervently 
pray and intercede for one another, Absolutely. we wouldn't have as much stuff as we do. We wouldn't have all the bewitchment. We wouldn't have all the jealousy. We wouldn't have all the envy and strife. We wouldn't give the, the enemy an opportunity to come in and wreak havoc and do all of these things. If we really, really, truly covered each other, if we really fervently prayed one for another. And so we've got to begin to look at things a lot differently than we've looked at in the past. See, you know, I, and I think unfortunately, um, you know, the church has almost adopted the world's principle as to say, you know, I'm just going to take care of me. I'm just going to, mm -hmm. you know, dog eat dog world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll put you down so that I myself can, you know, go to the next level. And so we've got to really begin to look at that because we are only as strong as our weakest link. And so we've got to look at that in a different light. Um, and, and that our next level may be sitting next to you. Hmm. Our mm -hmm. next level may be the person that you've allowed offense to come in and separate you from. And so we've got to begin to look at that, really seek God. And I, I'm just going to challenge all of you, and, and I'm challenging myself to really seek God, to find out, God, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Who do you have to be a part of my life? Yes. You know, whenever God wants to bless you, he'll send someone. But when the enemy wants to, de to, de to, de to destroy you, he'll send someone. Or he'll cause you to be so disconnected from the person that God sent. And so we've got to really, really look at that and be more mindful of the really the demonic forces that we're dealing with and really come together as the body of Christ on one accord. I, I, you know, I said this probably about eight months ago that, that the body of Christ is now disabled because we're missing limbs. You know, we're missing hands, we're missing feet, we're missing eyes because people's like, you know, I don't need you. I can do my own thing. And so, you know, Christ didn't come so that everybody could do their own thing. So. Wow. <laughs> sure That's do. good. <laughs> you know, so so now let me say this. Now we've had uh, so far Apostle Jojo Dawson, Alexander Pagani, Sophia Ruffin, Ivory Hopkins, Andrew Tao, Keenan Bridges, uh, Ryan McJimsey, Nigel Lewis, Latanya Smith, and uh, coming up on Friday is um, um, Jennifer Ives. And so because I just I wanted to make sure that we had a balanced um, a balanced environment of, of speakers for this whole thing and. This has just been tremendous. I mean, it's been a tremendous time. Uh, you said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say something that nobody else did. No, you said <laughs> something that nobody else yes. did uh, yes. because you have your own. You know, and that's why we encourage people to write books. I love what Apostle Eckhart has always encouraged all of us to write books. But I love that because even if somebody's written a book on the subject, you can write it from a different perspective. And, uh, and so your message today, I really believe people have been impacted. And uh, they can, if those that, that just God put it on their heart to sow a seed, they can sow it at Simply Latanya Ministries, right? Yes, they, if you desire to feel led to sow a seed, they can sow it at simplylatanya.com. There is a donate button, or you can, and I'm on Cash App. I believe it is Prophetic Nurse. Prophetic Nurse. Yeah. Because we we not practicing nurses over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's them. Now, I couldn't listen, please. I can't stitch you up. I can't do nothing. Uh, so that's that's these two, I, I but I, I really still, love I it, though. I think I still could do some, I think I still could suture. I think oh, I still, if I had to suture somebody, I think I could handle that. You can still do it? I think I could. Wow. Well, listen, thank you guys so much. Join us tomorrow again. Uh, for those of you who are in the Tampa Bay area tonight, of course, we have our Wednesday night Bible study, Contagious Church. You can learn more about Contagious Church, whether it's in Tampa, where my wife and I pastor, of course, Prophet Latanya is one of the uh, lead, um, uh, one of the leaders there in the house, one of the lead prophets, one of the lead intercessors along with my wife. Uh, and then we also have Contagious Church Charlotte, which is uh, pastored by uh, Reginald and Shanika Wingfield. And uh, of course, you can go to contagious.com church to find out more about that or you can go to their facebook page you can go to contagious church charlotte contagious church tallahassee and contagious church tallahassee of course is pastored by uh tracy and allison stallworth and then we're in the process of planning contagious church um jacksonville which will be uh which will be um pastored uh, by the Qu the Quisenberries. I, I would always say Kisenberry, but he said it's Quisenberry. And so I had to get that right the other day. And uh, sometimes people love you enough to let you mispronounce their name. And uh, people do me like that all the time. Lejeune, Lawan, I'm like, just call me Cole. I'm sure fine. Yeah, I get everything. So we we, we appreciate to you. So into Prophet Latine. She is a tremendous gift and a tremendous blessing uh, to the body of Christ. Uh, she is she is faithful, she is committed. Um, and you know, as she said, I'm always, I always, I'm one of those people that ask those questions, who are you connected to? Mm -hmm. 
When people are doing ministry, I want to know who you're connected to. And sometimes you see people traveling everywhere, but they're not connected to anybody in particular. Somebody said, did you have a PayPal? Yep. Yes, it's producingpearls at yahoo.com. That's my PayPal. You have to honor me. The P. Okay, we, we, we we're almost there. We're going to get it. Yeah. We are going to get it. Producing pearls at yahoo.com. We're going to get it, y'all. Producing pearls at yahoo.com. Yeah, we're going to get it. God, they want me to tell y'all hello. He's over here being bad. He's been uh, Evangelist Pearl Turner. I think she's from Guam. Oh, wow. Good to see you all the way from the island uh, island nation of, Gu of Guam. Good to mm -hmm. see you. God bless you. And, uh, so at any rate, we love you guys. We thank God for you. Again, if you're in Tallahassee, please go see Contagious Church Tallahassee with the Star Wars. If you're in Charlotte, please go and see uh, our Charlotte Church there. Uh, Jacksonville, we're coming soon. We're going to start talking about interest meetings, and we'll be coming up to meet you guys there in, uh, in Jacksonville very soon. And then, of course, um, make sure you tune into what um, um, to what Prophet Latanya is doing. And uh, again, you'll see us all doing some some ministry together as the new year comes in and as we look at uh, the years that are to come. So at any rate, we love you, we bless you, we thank God for you, and we will see you later. I think my wife's trying to put one more piece in, and then I'm going to close it out. Yeah, we're going to find something to eat. Find something to eat. So yes. You all just take an introspect of yourselves. I know some of the things that I may have talked about or even maybe the gentleman last night talked about with the bewitchment is probably so far-fetched. You know, um, we don't think about spiritual warfare in that way. You know, we mm -hmm. think about cute little devils with pitchforks and we think about that because I know when I was talking about the spirits being attached to... Um, the, the young lady that my son was dating, you know, I think for some people that was so far-fetched to even um, think that way. But we have to understand that our ancestors, they did have ancestral bids. You know, they did make bids over our heads and our lives. And they did, you know, trade power with the enemy. You know, you can have all of the firstborn girls. You can have all of the firstborn sons. You can have all of the sons. You can have all of the girls, you know, um... In my bloodline, I just want the power. I just want the money. I want the promotion. I want the this. And I know it seems so, so far-fetched. And I promise you, had I not had I not been the granddaughter of a witch, it would be far-fetched to me too. Had I not had I not been that, I have been talk about being bewitched. And I'll say this in closing: I have been a dope boy's girlfriend, and they had um, a neighbor, an older lady. And um, she had started reporting them to the police. <laughs> they went to the, the Obia man. And um, I won't tell y'all where I live. I guess y'all will figure that out later. But anyway, they, we, they went to the Obia man. They created, a, they created a tape, a cassette tape. So we back in the day with cassette tapes. They mailed the cassette tape to her. She goes and she plays a cassette tape and listens to the cassette tape and dies. Mm -hmm. Talk about being bewitched. Mm -hmm. This stuff is real, y'all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's real whether you want to believe it or not. It's real whether you... It's, re it's really real. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really real. So I know some of the people from the islands that Apostle has interviewed or will interview will be able to tell you some stories. I could tell you some stories that seem like so far-fetched like it's out of a movie i can tell you own per my own personal stories with witchcraft and my own personal story with hexes and bewitchment i can tell you my own life the life i've lived my sister my mother and i i could tell you but you know it seems so far-fetched but guys it's, it's real so mm -hmm. you need to be thankful for this series thank you it's been tremendous we're putting all the things in the reason some of you are like well you know we were we were done with the ebook with the most of the ebook and then when we started hearing some of these stories it brought out other things we wanted to include so you can pre-order the new ebook it's on our website www.lajanvalor.com you can also get a free chapter of sudden breakthrough and uh, see all the other products that we have and uh really soon we'll be talking about our suddenly meeting in chattanooga and in trinidad and in uh, and then also the meeting that we're going to do, we're going to do a contagious church meeting very soon. Uh, that's going to be a blessing as well. Uh, um, so we just want you to know that we love you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was looking at that. Nice. You're like, yeah, the ebook. Yeah, I love that ebook cover. Um, Nicole did a tremendous, did tremendous job in designing that, and um, I really appreciate that. I mean, it it's it gets your attention. And yeah, so it, it, it makes you think, you know. And uh, and so I think it is something we got to learn how to discern the voice. 
of the destiny destroying spirit because that's what it's ultimately trying to do destroy our destiny destroy our influence mm -hmm. destroy our income destroy our families covenants all those things and so at any rate we love you and we bless you and we're getting out of here but you know preachers have to close even five times on periscope listen, facebook oh, listen, several times. yes god yeah awesome love you guys